Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is how to make Stor uh, Thor's Stormbreaker. Fun project, and this is really durable and strong. You can use this for cosplay or going to conventions, and it's not hard to make. I'll show you just a few different materials, and of course I give you the template with everything you need. So let's take a quick look here first before we start the build at what the major components. A sheet of foam board. You could use cardboard and a big piece of foam, and you have a lot of alternatives. Different and spackling here too, but this spackling is optional, but it does make it look really nice. There's the completed Stormbreaker there, and I give you the template with all the parts, the handle, the, the head of the weapon with both the axe and the hammer, and the detail work. Can't get it much easier than that. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chase, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, major, uh, uh, the different part, things you're going to need to make this project. The template, a sheet of foam board, or a big piece of cardboard, some foam, and you can use a variety of different types of foams. I use something I call crunchy foam that I bought at an arts and crafts store. You can get this at Michael's, at AC Moore, at Hobby Lobby, at um, you know, a bunch of different places. And the big thing is get it four inches thick if you can. Spackling is easy. You get it in a hardware store. It costs like $6 for that tub. A couple of different sizes of rope would be nice for this project. A really thick rope and then a thinner rope. Same thing. I bought those, I think, in Walmart. Oh, Joanne Fabrics has all of this stuff. Here's a few other things. Something to cut the foam with, some glue, hot glue gun, some sandpaper. And the foam is really easy to cut. And the piece I got is 27 inches long. It's 12 inches wide. And here's the big thing is it's 4 inches thick, which makes for a nice, um, sturdy, uh, thick hammerhead for us. But you can glue together thinner pieces if need be. I have on my website I have some alternatives for you for not using spackling or how to use smaller pieces of foam. But let's go ahead and build it. Take the three pieces that make up the the head of the weapon and cut those out and tape them together like this. There you go. See so as easy as that. Trim that a little bit to make a nice sharp edge, if need be. And then place it on your foam. And using a ruler and a marker, trace it out. Now, this product is not that hard to do. Okay, now... um. There you go. See, looks good. But it does will take you two days if you end up going with the spackling because simply because the spackling takes overnight to dry. Because we're going to put it on nice and thick. But go ahead and cut out that that um, the head of the weapon. And see how easy this stuff is to cut? Not a problem. You can use a hacksaw blade. It's like my favorite tool to use because you can get them cheap. Some kind of a keyhole saw. Even this... Um, knife that Floracraft makes. It's just a plastic knife, serrated knife that even cuts the foam. So there we go. We've cut out the profile of the weapon. Now we're going to go ahead and cut out the, uh, well, this, I guess I call this the profile. We've cut out the shape of the weapon. Now we're going to cut out the profile. See, that's three quarters of an inch there. So in the middle there, we're taking it down three quarters of an inch. So mark up both sides. See how that is? And make sure you put a line along the center here of the axe blade. So you know where to cut to. Because we're going to cut that down. Really easy. Take your time. Um, the biggest risk is overcutting, cutting too deep. So if need be, cut it in small sections to take, just take your time. And if you make a mistake, you can always just glue on a piece and then recut it. So a rasp, saw, sandpaper. I'll, I'll show you more. But you know, I think a lot of times people are um, a little cautious about working with foam, but it's really easy to work with. You just have to take your time and 
kind of take a good look at it before you start cutting. See that? That looks good. I almost thought I should leave it like this. It does look good like that, but it doesn't come to a sharp edge on the axe blade, so I cut that off too. And there we go. The blade of the weapon is done. Looks good. So now, like I said, you could go ahead and leave it like this, and then later we'd paint it. And it's okay, and it's still pretty good. But if we plaster it, it'll be stronger, it will look better. And you can actually get a nice metallic finish on this if you put the time into it. I'm going to do sort of like a rough plastering, just so I can move on to the next projects. i got a lot of stuff going on. But I'll go ahead and apply the plaster, and be careful of those edges. You want nice, crisp edges there. That's what helps to make it look metallic. But put it on nice and thick. And this, this stuff is called dry decks. And the reason why I like it, this pink stuff, is because it will actually, as it dries, it turns white. And when it's totally white, you know it's dry. So that's just kind of neat. Pick up dry decks if you do get plaster. See, it's not dry yet. but So I'm going to set it aside overnight and let it dry. Meanwhile, let's work on the handle. Take the three pieces of the handle and cut them out. They're in the template. Hey, the template is totally free. This whole tutorial is totally free. If you end up making this project, be sure to send me a picture. I'd love to put it on my website. And how about a dollar donation from through PayPal for all my hard work? The template is free. Okay, so put those three pieces together and then um, lay them on foam board. Trace them, the, the handle there, and make five of them. We want a nice, strong handle. We're going to layer this five layers thick so we get a handle that is durable. You're going to be able to take this to conventions, you know, to cosplay with it, to use it. You know, it's going to be, it's going to have some heft to it. It's going to, the plaster makes it a little, nice and heavy, but not over heavy, but it has a good feel to it, this weapon. And it's nice and strong. So go ahead and glue together those five pieces. And if you want a really good gluing, what you do is, and I, I should show you this in a couple of, is you actually shift it and slide those pieces together a little bit. You don't just plop it on top. You actually slide it on like a, a, an inch. Like, so do I show that here? Let me see if I show you one where I slide it really good. Put some glue, push it on there, and slide it. Not really, darn it. All right, well, anyway. Five layers thick, good handle. Okay, it's the next day, I think. Yep, it's the next day. And see, our our hammer our hammer and axe head is done. And it looks pretty rough, right? Don't even worry about it. We're going to fix all of that very, very easily. Now, you could go ahead and do a second coat of, of spackling, right, to fix it up and touch it up. I'm not going to because I, then I don't want to wait for it to dry again. Although it wouldn't be overnight because we're just doing a little bit. But you can get this nice and smooth so it's like like metal. But let's go ahead and sand it up and see what we get. You can use just about any grade of sandpaper. 60 grade is great because that's nice and rough and makes fast work of it. And then you, you do finer work with the 220, something like that. Don't need to worry about the sandpaper. Do 60 or get some 60 or 80. Maybe some 220 or 300, 200, and you're good. Spackling is very easy to sand. Take your time and try to get focus on those edges. You want those edges to look good. See, and see, see, I could, I'm going to actually repair that. That's a little too much. Just more spackling, that's all it takes. But see how I get some nice, crisp, sharp edges? That's good. And now, even though it makes a mess, it's very easy to clean up. Now let's add the details. And I give you those, of course, in the template. Two pieces like that. Now, place the template on your foam board like this. Now, with, with a thin detailed piece like this, it's difficult to cut it out and trace it. So what you can do is use a blunted pencil to press real hard down on those lines. And what you're doing is you're causing an indent in the foam board underneath. 
that you can see and draw out. I'll show you. It's a little difficult to see there, but some of it you can see. Now there's an indent in that foam board. So now we can put a ruler on there and draw it out. Now this is a long tutorial, so I'm kind of talking a little fast. But uh, covered a lot of ground. Even though it's an easy project, there are quite a few steps to it. But I just wanted to make sure you get, if you're going to make this, I wanted to make sure you get all the information you possibly could get to make it as easy as possible for you. And I got alternatives on my website. Make sure you check it out. You know, what does it look like when it isn't plastered? What can you use other than the green foam? Now, check this out. See that piece that goes on the front there? Look underneath. I cut it. I put two cuts in that so it would fold over easy like that and st stick to the profile of the axe head. Just don't forget to do that. Well, there we go. We're going to mount them on there like that. So go ahead. Now, do not use hot glue for this because hot glue will not stick to spackling. Just use any plain old white glue. Omen's glue, P PVA glue, and that'll be quite nice. Looks good. Next, let's um, add the handle to the axe head. So mark it out, draw it right on the spackling there, and then cut that spackling off. It's like a shell now. Just cut that shell off. And then dig it out. Use any kind of tool you want to use. A bamboo skewer works good for this. Try to get a nice snug fit. So dig some out, test it, dig some out, test it. And once you get that that um, that hole, what is this called? Is this a mortise and tenon? I think carpenters call this a mortise and tenon. This kind of joint. But put a lot of glue in there, either white glue or hot glue. And I ran my hot glue stick ran out. I should have got another one, but I didn't. But that's okay. I still got a nice strong fit. But there we go. Put it in there and make it nice and strong. Add more glue. You probably can't use too much glue. You don't want the axe head to go flying off when you're swinging this thing around. Okay, let's paint it. The axe and hammerhead is silver. Hey, you know, I get just about a thousand videos now. I have hundreds of cosplay and weapons and armor. You want to make knight's armor? You want to make all kinds of weapons, video game weapons? I got them all. Look through my playlist. Look through my channel. And paint the handle brown. I inadvertently picked up at Walmart a color called nutmeg, and I liked it. I thought it was brown. I didn't read the label. So I was like, ooh. So now let me show you a detail work that really makes a difference. Just dab on a little bit of black like this in some of the crevices, all right? And then fade it out so it's less and less black further away from the crevice you get. And this makes a really big difference. This is a dry brushing technique. But see how that looks? That's really nice detail. Don't skip this detail. This will give it a nice aged metallic look. It's almost like dirt or grime or, or grease kind of accumulates in the cracks and crevices of the axe head. That's a really good detail. That's dry brushing. See it? See how that black looks good? So now we're going to um, strengthen, preserve, pr and, and protect it with something called Mod Podge. And you can use use a high gloss. Your Mod Podge either brush on or spray on, which I just brushed on. And see, it's got that shiny look to it. Really, really nice. Do the whole thing, including the handle. Mod Podge is great. It will protect it and give it a shine. So now let's add the root system, which we're going to use just ropes. Wrap it two times around the, two and a half times maybe, around the handle, and then open over the axe head with the large rope. Cut it and glue it in place. And then in two sections, we're going to use the thinner rope. You know, and you can improvise this. You might be able to use wire. And then do another one down here below, and that's it. See, that looks good. I like it. But I definitely did not like the color. That um, hemp rope color wasn't quite right. But So I used a darker brown, not my nutmeg, a darker brown, and a 
and color those ropes, which is more accurate to the actual weapon. So color all those ropes, including the large rope. And that's it. We're done. Yay! Looks good. Be sure to send me a picture if you make this. If you've got questions, send me an email. Check out my website, stormthecastle.com. i got so much stuff you'd be shocked. There we go. You are ready to use this thing. It's got some nice weight to it, but it's comfortable. It's strong. You can use it for conventions and cosplay and stuff like that. I, I like this. I like this, this um, project and this weapon. It takes two days. It's not that hard. The, the only reason why it takes two days is because you have to let the um, spackling dry. Oh, and hey, you want another Thor project? I do have a Hammer of Thor project. It's been around a long time. It's a very popular project. Easy to make. If you want to make both weapons, make this one first because it's easy. You'll get a sense for the foam and cutting and stuff. That's it. Thank you. Um, check out my website. Like I said, um, consider supporting me via Patreon or PayPal. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. What the heck? Thousand videos, all of them free. All kinds of subjects and projects. Here's a couple more videos you might like. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.